Welcome to the CYF course and today we will practice encouragement. How many languages are you speaking? One, two, three, four, five? <laughs> Did you consider the language of encouragement as one of these? As far as we have been concerned, we really had to learn it like a new language. When we arrived for the first time in the United States, everyone was encouraging us. We were doing the dishes and people were saying, wow, thank you very much, that's great, you are awesome. And then Guy played the keyboard, oh wow, you have truly a gift in worship, that's perfect. And you know what, it was over and over. And after a while, we became so irritated, Guy and I. We're like, what do they want out of us? And we went to the Lord and we said, what it is here? And he told us, you have the problem. Because you don't know how to give and to receive encouragement. Wow! And it, something really changed. It's perhaps a little bit caricatural, but in Europe, we see what is not going well and we say it very clearly to be sure you get it. And what is going well, we don't say it. All of that to keep you humble. What a lie! True encouragement are an essential part to nurture our heart-to-heart -heart relationships. If I give an encouragement to someone, his heart will open. I remembered so clearly when our daughter was trying to come down the stairs when she was a toddler. We gave her some encouragement and we could see on her face and behavior that it was helping her to take risks and keep on. Have you ever tried in a very casual conversation to say at one point, what I really appreciate in you is your joy, your way you are paying attention to me or listening to me or how you have been so compassionate and all of that. It changes the whole atmosphere and very fast you go deep and reach the heart. Our words have power. What words we, do we choose to give? Death and life are in the power of language. No one is motivated to change when he is criticized. Oh, you are so worthless. You will never be able to do that. You will never success and you are making me tired instead of, you will make it, I'm trusting you, keep on trying. We help a being more by giving him a favorable image of himself than by constantly confronting him with his defaults. It's Albert Camus that say that, a well-known writer. A smile has more effect than a throne. This is why encouragement has a greater impact than blame. It's James McConnell that say that. And it's a challenge. And especially, I think, for French-speaking people. <laughs> when we blame someone, we put him under shame. And he is paralyzed, apathic, unable to move anymore. <sighs> what it is worth for me to even try? Let's stop, stop this vicious circle. Proverbs 16.2 tell us that pleasant speeches are sweet for the soul and a remedy for the body. Practically, we need to learn 
how to do it if we want our encouragement to have its full impact. There is a difference between telling to a child, thank you for your drawing, having a look and putting it on the table, or to have a descriptive praise. Oh, thank you for your drawing. I like how you did the circle and you used several colors. Wow. Keep on doing that. You know, there is just the, emo the emotion is important. Wow, nice, thank you. And then a description. I like that and that and how, and how you did that and that. And we end with a word that will stay, that will carry his life. Keep on doing that. I encourage you. Continue to develop that gift. If it's difficult for you, here are a few suggestions that may be useful. Observe. It will help you to find things to say. When you observe a child, hmm, you, are, you can see things that you can then encourage him with. Work on a quality list, you know, with words. And I have for my children um, a small notebook where I write what I see and observe so I can tell them this and train as a new language. It will come. Encouragement motivates us to give more, to persevere. You know that, of course. But sometimes, instead of encouragement, we give a reward or Better say, said, we think that a reward is an encouragement. Okay, in, e in a way it is. But the long-term effect is not the same. And we need to be very aware of this. The encouragement makes the person feel good about themselves. The opposite is in fact happening when a reward is given that will produce only a very short-term feeling. Example, if you do your ho homework, I will give you a treat. Or, wow, you did your French homework and I have been watching you. You worked so hard. You are perseverant. Can you feel the difference? So, let's be wise and careful using reward. It's not wrong, but it should not be systematic and become something taken for granted and not used instead of words of encouragement. I'm giving you a challenge for today and even for each day of these coming weeks till it becomes natural for you. We say that we need three weeks to develop an habit. So, choose someone you would like to encourage. Think about what you want to say to him. A feeling? Wow, great, awesome, oh, I'm so touched. A description? Wow, your drawing is so nice, I can see how you manage to do so nice circles and you use, you know, so many colors and uh, uh, I can see how you, you feel the page. Wow, it took you so much time, you know, things like that. And a summary word filled with light. Keep on, continue, you are doing great. And of course, go and tell him that. Of course. Listen to the Lord. He will inspire you. He is our number one encourager. Some questions to finish with. I will appear on your screen and let's be known as a people of encouragement. Amen? Bye for now.